Hello YouTube, welcome to a new installment of the Hypertrophy series. Today we're going to dive deeper into the concepts of uh, muscular failure and mechanical failure. I've introduced both of them and now we can actually get into the details and uh, the juicy parts of hypertrophy. So what I want to discuss here, the, the advanced uh, details and applications of those two types of failures are whether they are organic or artificial, and that's extremely important. Uh, so for, what I mean by that is, uh, for example, for muscular failure, you can reach what will resemble to be a muscular failure, meaning that you won't be able to go anymore, your form will not break down, and it will just feel like you tapped out, your strength is dead, the muscle fibers are not able to produce uh, power anymore. And you might think, okay, that's a good set because I completely tired out my muscular, uh, my muscular ability to produce strength. On the other hand, there could also be the potential that what you did wasn't really that. Something happened that hindered your ability to keep producing power, but the muscle fibers weren't as tired as you might think. So we're going to start with that. But the concepts apply to both ends of the failure, mechanical and muscular. So as far as muscular failure goes, what could be uh, something that happens within your body that stops you, prevents you from, from going on, but is in a way a poor replica of muscular failure? Well, one thing is going to be your endurance. I'm not going to discuss cardiovascular fatigue here because it's already been done. But what I want to speak about here is the mechanisms that you, your body put in place to stop you from continuing to push and damage the fibers, which is lactic acid. When you do a set, sometimes it starts burning and you have to stop, but your muscle wasn't retired. Really you weren't at the end of your rope. What happened was you let, you gave your body enough time to, ca to catch up so that it would send something to stop you. And there are certain differences in between humans. Some people produce much less lactic acid and therefore they are able to push more. And I also understand, and I want to make the distinction clear here, that while you can push through the fatigue that the, that the lactic acid creates in your body, you can only go so far, right? Because at the end of the day, yes, it's, it's a mindset, but the lactic acid build up is, it's a, it's a method that is, perfectly engineered to make you stop, meaning that besides just being painful, it's going to make your uh, muscle unable to continue. But the muscle in itself was not tired. That's what I mean between artificial and organic failure. This is an artificial failure because it's something that did not actually mean that you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish. And I would argue that it's not the best for hypertrophy. So how do we avoid that? Because we, we can know it, but you can't just tell your body, hey, no lactic acid, please, and it won't do it. Well, the way to do it is to work within rep ranges that are going to be challenging enough so that the triggering of the lactic acid happens either after the set, meaning that it doesn't even have time to kick in, or at the very tail end of the set, so that your last few reps coincide with the moment where your body is trying to stop you. So you can still get those last reps out, you still use the muscle fibers, but when you're done, your body will still have had the chance to go through that process. Most of your sets should be that. I know it's, it's not popular in YouTube bodybuilding to say something like this, because I'm basically telling you to not focus that much on the pump, but it's what it is. That's what a pump is. Most of these guys who do pumps, they go into the 30 or 40 rep range, which I, which I explained is not a good way to get big as a natural. You need to focus on lower rep ranges where you can actually push progression and strength. And these rep ranges, surprise, surprise, also do not encourage the production of lactic acid in the muscle. So that's going to be a very beneficial way for you to always promote organic failure and always avoid artificial failure. Of course, you can let yourself Get, a, get in a few sets of artificial failure here and there because you might think it feels good. And at the end of the day, it might, might even have benefits, but by itself, because of how much it tempers your ability to push tonnage, 
it is not something you need to focus on. You need to avoid it as much as possible. So that's for muscular failure, which is highly important. But what about mechanical failure? Because when, since we want to avoid mechanical failure as much as possible, you might think that whether it's organic or artificial doesn't matter, but it does. Because if it is, it's just like with, uh, muscular failure, it gives us the ability to control it. If you can control whether you reach muscular failure artificially or organically, the same can be said for the mechanical failure, meaning that we can avoid it as much as possible too, to always promote muscular fatigue. So what happens here is uh, an artificial mechanical failure is something that happens unbeknownst to you. You didn't choose that. It just happened. It can be because of poor technique. It can be because you didn't place the ball properly. All of those things can be controlled. If you fail, there is a way around it so that it never happens again. An organic mechanical failure is going to be an exercise that you yourself set up in a way that is going to put you in a position that might not be super advantageous or might even qualify as being poor form, poor posture, and therefore will immediately be a mechanical failure before the set even starts. That's not bad. It's not by bad why, because you chose for it to happen. For example, if you do a stiff leg deadlift, if you do it properly, the bar should be near your toes. That way you have to lift the bar like a crane and the involvement of the hips, the glutes and the armstrings is going to be less important because you're putting yourself in a position when you're mechanically weaker. That's technically a mechanical failure because you're not applying 100% of your strength. But as far as muscular fatigue goes, you're going to be able to target certain parts of the body, the arm strings, for example, that are going to reach um, the muscular failure much faster thanks to an organic mechanical failure that you instigated. And that's a good thing. You, you're also going to find, and that's something that I don't promote much because it's an advanced concept and I don't want people to get hurt, but if you know how to lift improperly, you know how to lift properly. If you know how to create mechanical failure, you know how to avoid mechanical failure. So that is something that needs to be kept in mind for the cyclotrophy series as a whole. Even if I tell you about a topic or a concept and I tell you, hey, this is bad, avoid it. It does not mean that we are going to just completely ignore it. There is still knowledge and ability that, we, uh, that exists within that if we can control it. Anything we can control and master can only be beneficial because we are going to be applying it. It's not going to be applied to us. So that's it for this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Have a good day.